Hello gorgeous, I'm back today and I have kind of an interesting topic for you guys today. I'm actually quite excited to be sharing this concept with you. So years ago, I was um, just thinking of this thought that in my culture, in my parents' country, Pakistan, where, um, you know, when a woman is ready to be married, a girl is ready to be married, she'll, she will get proposals from maybe three or four different men and then her and her family will choose one of those guys and then she'll be married and then they will make it work right based on similar values and devotion and providing and protecting and the success rate is quite high of successful marriages and so it just got me thinking of the fact that they didn't necessarily have a lot of choices to choose from, right? You would think in a culture where marriage is so valued and nuclear family is so valued that people would have like so many more options to choose from. But what I'm realizing is that they purposely limit their options. So, and then they just choose one of the options from the three or four proposals that they receive and it's quite interesting because i had kind of like this window open in my mind where i was kind of pondering this and then my husband sent me something that blew my mind because it was like the exact answer to what i was thinking about he said he's uh into physics and math and he sent me this like short little video clip of this thing called the 37 percent rule it's also known as the dirty toilet problem or the secretary problem. And basically, it's a mathematical way to make the right choice. And I'm actually, instead of trying to explain it to you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link two videos explaining this concept uh, where, you know, mathematicians are explaining it in a genius way. So I'll link those below for you. Please do take a look at them. They're quite short and pretty easy to understand but it will be like mind blowing for you to understand this. When I really made that like connected to those two dots, I also noticed that Pakistani families that live in the United States who have, you know, children that were bought up in the American culture, like myself, born and raised over here, when we apply the same rotational dating concept, but we apply it in a very American way, in meaning like we keep looking and looking and looking like we have more choices. We're encountering the same problems as our Western counterparts. So it's not so much the culture, it's the way that the culture functions, right? So if you take the same proposal way, the thing that I teach you guys, right? Rotational dating comes from my culture, but if you remove the some of the principles or you alter them, it doesn't have the same effect. So what I'm seeing in Pakistani families in the United States is that when they're given like, you know, 10, 20, 30 options to choose from, they're almost choosing not to choose and they're having the same problems as Western people that think there's something better out there. They're going to keep looking and then it becomes this like indefinite thing where you just keep looking for the next best thing and you can't make a choice. In fact, there is a brilliant book by this topic as well. He doesn't necessarily talk about dating, but the, the, the psychology and the concepts apply to all areas of your life. Um, it's called The Paradox of Choice, and I believe the author's name is Barry Schwartz. I'll go ahead and link that book in the description box as well. And he argues the same thing, that uh, when we are given too many choices, we experience decision fatigue, and then we choose not to choose. And he uh, lays it out very scientifically with all those studies and all that stuff. So definitely check that out as well if you want to learn more about The Paradox of Choice. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying, what if having way too many options actually creates the illusion of not having an option because you decide not to choose? Because at the end of the day, there will always be another option. It's true, right? There will always be someone richer, prettier, younger, wiser, better masked, with better values, living in a better house. Like Those options will always be available. But at some point, you have to make a decision and decide that this is the right choice and then align with that choice and shut out all the other options. I think that with the dating apps and 
the current situation and what I call the corrupt, the current corrupt dating matrix, it creates this huge illusion of choice where you can just swipe right and swipe left. And there's always someone better, younger, prettier, you know, whatever, richer uh, on the other end. And so you basically can't decide. This is probably why I choose to do groceries in like smaller stores versus larger stores with too many options. I can experience decision fatigue quite easily. If you really think about it, all of the wealthy people on the planet know this, right? They tend to have a uniform that they wear every day. Look at, um, you know, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, a lot of people have, uh, successful people have capsule wardrobes or things that they wear repeatedly. And I've talked about this many times on my own journey that I have automated a lot of decisions in my life because I want to use my creative energy for making like more important decisions, like how I'm going to serve people uh, in on my YouTube channel, in my work, and how I'm going to spend time doing the things that I actually love versus using my creative energy in areas that are meaningless, right? And so I think this is one of those things as well. It, it The same concept applies to dating that women and men are experiencing so much decision fatigue these days that uh, they're choosing not to choose and they say they want to get married they say they want to settle down but they just can't because there's always someone there's the illusion of someone better on the other end so anyways i'm gonna stop talking i really want you to watch the 37 percent rule video and if you want to learn more definitely read the book the paradox of choice so you can learn how having too many options can really um have the opposite intended uh, effect so honestly i mean i know this is politically incorrect to say but date three or four people in in the in your rotation and then just make a damn choice okay you have a love list you know that you are the reciprocal Yes, it will always seem like there's someone better, but make a choice, devote yourself to that marriage, to that relationship, and then shut off all other options, like literally stop looking and let something beautiful come out of that, like create something beautiful from divine union. Otherwise, like, you know, no one's moving forward because we've got a bazillion choices to choose from. I literally had three or four men on my rotation and then I chose one and then we're married, right? And then we devoted ourselves to each other. We shut off all the other options and then you get to do all the inner work and transform each other's lives in a way that's really meaningful, right? In order to create something meaningful with one person in divine union, you're going to eventually have to make a choice and decide that that is the right choice and shut off all other options. All right, so check out those resources I have in the description box for you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.